Hello everyone and welcome back! In the next few lessons we are going to answer the main question that you probably have at this point. Why use Angular Universal? What exactly is Angular Universal? When should we use it and why? What are the benefits and what are the potential downsides? So as you know Angular Universal is a server-side rendering engine for the Angular front-end framework. So what is exactly a rendering engine and what is the difference between a client-side rendering engine and a server-side rendering engine? This leads us to the question, what is a rendering engine in general? Going back here to our Angular application, we can see that the application is split up into multiple components. For example, the component that we see here on the screen corresponds here to the home component. The home component is made up of three files, the home component TypeScript file, the home component HTML file and the home component CSS file. Now, whenever we navigate through the application, such as, for example, when we click here on the View Course button, the Angular rendering engine is going to take the HTML template of the component, it's going to take the data of the component, in the case of the home component, it's going to take here the courses observable, and the Angular rendering engine is going to combine the two things together, the template and the data in order to produce the actual HTML that we see here on the page. So the rendering engine is the internal framework element that is responsible for transforming templates and data into actual HTML. That is the rendering process and that is the main responsibility of the rendering engine. This rendering process can be done either on the client side, directly at the level of the user's browser, or it can also be done on the server side. In traditional server-side applications, such as for example a PHP application, the rendering happens always on the server side. So the server is going to receive the incoming request here via the browser URL address bar, and then the server is going to determine what template should be rendered. The HTML is then going to be produced on the server and it's going to be sent over the wire to the browser. The browser is going to parse the HTML and it's going to display a page to the user. This is what happens with most of the applications that we browse through on the web and with most of the websites in general. Most of the internet uses server-side rendering. This is unlike a typical Angular application like the one that we see here. In a typical Angular application and also in other applications that use different front-end frameworks such as React, Vue, etc., the rendering process happens on the client side, directly on the user's browser. To better understand how client-side rendering works, let's now switch to a larger window. Here we will have the same small sample Angular application running, but we can also here open the DevTools to better inspect it. So now that the application has started up, let's have a look at the HTML of the page. As we can see, we have here a list of cards containing, for example, here the Angular Universal in-depth course. We can see here on the right hand side all the HTML and the CSS that is applied to the page. We can see here the material card title, we have here the material card custom HTML element, the course card list, etc. So as we can see, there is a lot of HTML on this page. However, if we now close the developer tools and we right click here on the background and we choose view page source, we are going to open the HTML that we got from the server when we refreshed here our browsers. So whenever we hit here the reload this page button, we are going to get some HTML from the server and that can be seen using the view source option. As we can see, the HTML that we have received from the server only contains here an empty application root tag. Everything else is either the title of the page, some metadata here present on the page header, and also some JavaScript tags containing the Angular framework and our application code. This means that what we typically receive from the server in a normal Angular application is essentially an empty HTML page without any content. 
So the question is, where is all the content that we see here on the page coming from? Where is this HTML coming from? Well, the HTML was not received directly from the server over the wire after we hit here reload. Instead, our application is going to fetch from the server this empty page here containing lots of JavaScript in this script tags, some CSS as well, and that's the page that we are going to display initially to the user. That will be essentially an empty HTML page without any content. Then the Angular application is going to start up and we're going to be doing an HTTP request to the backend to fetch some data. Let's have a look at the request here using the DevTools. I'm going to open here the Network tab from the DevTools and let's go ahead and refresh the application and apply here the AJAX filter. As we can see, we are doing here an AJAX request to our backend that happens to be running in Firebase and we are going to get back here a JSON payload containing the list of courses that we see here on the screen. We can see here the key of the course, we can see the category, we can see the URL to a given icon and we can see here the description of the course. Now, how is this JSON payload transformed into the HTML that we see here? Well, that's what the Angular rendering engine is going to produce. The Angular rendering engine is going to take the data that we got from the backend. It's going to also take the multiple templates that we have defined in our application, such as, for example, the home component template, the course card list component template, and the Angular rendering engine is going to transform the template and the data into the actual HTML that we see here on the page, just like it would happen in a typical PHP application, but this time around, the rendering process of producing the actual HTML happened on the client side, using the JavaScript runtime engine of the user's browser instead of happening on the backend on our server. As we can see, the rendering process in a web application can happen either on the server or on the client. By default, in a normal Angular application, the rendering process will happen only on the client. However, sometimes we do have good reasons for wanting to render our application on the server instead of the client, and we are going to get into those reasons in detail in the next few lessons. Right now, it's important to understand exactly what is Angular Universal. Angular Universal is an Angular rendering engine that allows us to render an Angular application on the server instead of the client. And actually, Angular Universal is even more than that. We don't have to use Angular Universal necessarily on the server. Instead, we can even use it at application build time to pre-render the application multiple routes and serve those directly as plain HTML files. So instead of saying that Angular Universal is a server-side rendering engine for the Angular framework, it's actually more accurate to say that Angular Universal is a node-based rendering engine for Angular that can be used either for server-side rendering or for build-time pre-rendering of an Angular application. So I recommend for the rest of the course for you to keep that definition in mind. Angular Universal is a node-based Angular rendering engine. Now that we understand exactly what Angular Universal is, let's answer the questions. When would we need Angular Universal and why? What are the benefits? What are the downsides? What are the main use cases for server-side rendering and pre-rendering in general? That's what we will be answering in the next few lessons.